All right, time to implement this thing on a pick. So we're going to do a 430 lock, uh, but on a pick this time. Just like we did before, before you can kind of like get started and like, you know, retrofit your finite state machine for the specifics. Somebody's got to tell you how this thing is wired. Uh, I've made some decisions. Um, it was kind of hard because we needed seven buttons. We didn't have that many. Uh, to be honest, the first few were easy. Um, so zero, one, two, three, and one, two, and three. Uh, I just put those on the four buttons we do have. Uh, so those are just on the port B buttons. Uh, for number four, it actually worked out kind of clever. Um, pushing down on the joystick is actually connected to RA4, and that's actually just another basic switch. So it looks like there are only four, uh, but the fifth is actually the push button here. Remember, this guy is for reset, so you couldn't use him. And then I needed two more buttons. Uh, I didn't really know what to do, so I decided to use the joystick in different ways. Uh, so if you press down, that's enter. Uh, if you press to the left, uh, that's clear. Uh, I also had to be get creative to implement this on the output side, so I needed a red and a green LED. I could have just used two LEDs, but I thought it'd be more fun uh, to make green be like a victory dance. So There's going to be like some kind of little dance that gets played. And then the red is just if they all come on, that's failure, right? Uh, so that's what this guy's wired as. You've got to take this information, uh, put it into the finite state machine. You've also got to go through and number your states. Uh, so oh, I've got a nice picture here that shows, uh, you know, where each button is coming from. Uh, clear and enter, those will be the only ones that are hard to remember. Clear, kind of like it's push it out, right? So get rid of it, that's clear. And then down is like submit your answer, right? Uh, also for this, just to kind of give you a heads up, we're going to put some information on the LCD. Um, this is just for debugging purposes, so you can like see how your code is doing. You obviously wouldn't show this in a real product, right? Because it's going to like tell you what's going on inside the finite state machine. So here was the finite state machine we started with. Uh, we had to pick uh, numbers for states. Uh, so I mean, no, no reason to be, you know, fancy. I just made these one, two, three, four, five, or I started with zero, uh, zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Um, also, as far as the uh, the names on the transitions here, I could have written in um, R A zero, or sorry, R B zero through R B three, R A four down left. Instead, I chose to just put the number uh, that represents that. And the reason I did that will become obvious when we get to the code. All right, so I want you to implement this, but I don't want you to focus on all the details. So what I've done is I've given you a lot of starting code um, that includes everything except for, so it will not include any of the transitions. So you're gonna be responsible for the transitions. It already takes care of the outputs, so they're all set. It takes care of the reset, because that was easy. Uh, but it doesn't take care of any transitions. So I think the easiest way whenever you're going to get some starting code, I actually find it easier to make the project first uh, and then um, and then download the file that you're going to start with. So you can make a standalone project uh, for the recently used, you know, uh, 4520. Uh, you're going to need your uh, pit kit. Uh, mine was not connected, so I had to connect it there. Uh, all right, now I can select it. And your compiler. Uh, and I'm going to call this uh, finite state machine lock uh, 430. Uh, pick whatever name you want, right? So it creates a new project for you. In the source files, we're not going to add a template because I'm going to give you that special one. Uh, but we are going to need lcdmodule.c. So just call it LCD module. Just take out the word new. And then in the header area, we're going to need um, lcdmodule.h. So take out the word new. You remember that step, right? And then the starting code, uh, there's a link above this video and you can use that. Uh, you can just say save link as on, on the link above. I'm gonna have to do it from this weird place because it doesn't exist yet. And what I would do is I would just navigate to the folder where you've got things. So I've got like my projects here, I've got this folder uh, and I'm just gonna save it right in there. You've done this on labs many times. And then in source folders, I'm going to say add existing item, which is a little different. Um, and I'm going to add um, this code, the me430 lock.c file. 
Uh, so you should be able to put this thing in. Uh, it should go ahead and compile and run. Uh, so you can go ahead and compile it and make sure you're kind of set up right. Um, you should get this annoying error message. Uh, and you can say, never show me this again. And the code that's in here, it's going to already do the like information to the LCD for you. Um, it's going to put you into the ready state. Um, but no matter what buttons you press, it's not going to leave it. So let's see if that all works. Uh, so you can see it says ready. If I press 0, 1, 2, 3, press down the joystick, that's 4. Clear is to the left. Enter is down. Um, and you can see no matter what I do, uh, I don't change states. My state is always ready. So I did some things for you. I display things to the LCD, but I've done none of the transitions. Let's just glance at the go code together, um, just so you can kind of get a feel for what's here. Um, I do recommend that if you're in your project, you're going to do something similar. You could look at this in great gory detail, um, but you don't have to understand any more than there's one function you're going to have from that, right? Um, so the things that you uh, should see in here is that I've defined all the states just like before. I've got pound defines. I started all them with the word state underscore something. Um, I've tried to break things down into functions, which more complex problems will have a lot of uh, individual functions. Um, and so <clears throat> there's a lot of uh, a lot of goodness in here. You're going to be writing um, update state uh, based on whatever the new press is. Let's go ahead and look at main. So there's some things in main that you've seen a lot. Um, you don't need to worry about any of that. The main loop looks like this. It's fairly straightforward. It checks for a new press. So somehow or another I've got code that checks for a new press. If it was not no button press, which is like saying it actually is a real button just got pressed, that code's checking for edges is what it's really doing. So it's saying, hey, is there actually a new edge um, and it takes care of that for you. Your job is to implement this function. Uh, update state based on the new press. So it's going to be something. It, it, so some, some edge just happened, um, and you have to update the state. After you update the state, the LCD will take care of displaying it for you. Um, and the LEDs, the outputs, that's already done for you. Um, and then I've got a little loop delay here just so there's no reason to go too fast. Um, and it helps with debounce if you have a delay like that present. So you can look through here. Uh, this is the function that you have to write. So you have two pieces of information. You've got the current state, you know, what is the current state? And then you've got a, a new press. What is the new press? So you can see that here's an example of something you might want to do. If your state is the ready state uh, and your new press is a four, then you might want to transition state to be state, and then I called it successful four. I was a little more verbose here because it was easy to make them, them long names. The potential values uh, for new press um, are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, which you probably guessed, 5 if it's enter, 6 if it's clear. How this works, you can look at it if you want, or you can just say, hey, somebody else wrote that for me. This is what I've got to work with. So it's one of these seven values, right? Those are the values of new press. Uh, state is going to be one of these values. Your job is to, after this function finishes, make the next state, uh, you know, get all set up. Uh, there's a hint here that you might want to make uh, failure be in kind of like a catch-all area. Um, and then if you would like to look at the rest of the code, you can see how the LEDs are going to up, update. Um, you can see how the LCD, uh, how it displays stuff. Um, you can look for that press line, which is line two. You can see how that works. Checking for a new press. This type of, of concept might be very useful in a lot of projects, but I'm not going to dive into it here. You can look at it if you, if you need it or care about it. I've got a helper method for the ADC, and that's it. Interestingly enough, there are no interrupts anywhere in this code. All right, so it's time for you to pause the video. Uh, I mean, this, this first one, this example, I mean, you could use this if you wanted. There's a lot of ways to structure ifs. Uh, you've got to go through and check off all the different things uh, that you need to build. Take some time. See if you can do it on your own. Once you get it, try it on the board. Try the buttons. Uh, see if you can do it. 
inevitably your solution would not be the same as mine because there's so many different ways to write ifs. So take a little bit and see if you can do it on your own. All right, so I'm gonna do it as well. Um, I mean, everybody's kind of got their own way they would write this. Uh, the way that I'm gonna choose to write it is I'm gonna start off uh, by looking for the clear press. Uh, the clear press is six. Um, if you wanted to, typing six is fine because that is clear. There's also a pound of fine in the code uh, called clear button value, you could use that. And I don't care what the state used to be, uh, if somebody presses clear, uh, that takes you back to ready. That's easy. Then what I'm going to do is if it wasn't the clear button, then I know it was, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, or five. And for those, those either like put you into the next state or they send you to failure. So what each of these is going to do is they're going to kind of, um, you know, look like this. They're going to say like, if the state is such and such, and new press is, um, you know, something, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna say the next state is equal to state blah, right? Uh, and there's gonna be a bunch of these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of copy paste these guys. And then if none of those are true, um, then the state's gonna have to be uh, failure. So that's kind of my logic that I chose to use. I've still got to go through and check for all these uh, these like good arrows. Uh, so I'll do some of these guys. One of them was actually listed right here in the helper area. Uh, so if you're in the ready state um, and the value was four, then you move on to uh, successful four. That was that was the one that was done for you. There you go. One one more arrow done. Uh, if you're in the successful four state and you see a three, then you're gonna move to successful three. If you're in successful three, uh, and then the next press is a zero, uh, then move to successful zero. Hopefully you're seeing a pattern here. If you're in successful zero, and the new press is five, which is enter, um, there's a pound to find for it as well. It's called uh, enter button value. Then at long last, you're gonna move into the successfully unlocked state. Great. And then this one's kind of tricky. If you're in the successfully unlocked state and somebody presses enter, I've decided to let them stay in successfully unlocked. Um, if you look at the finite state machine in great gory detail, you'll notice the enter stays there. Um, and the way you know that it stays there is that it doesn't go anywhere else, right? Uh, so that was just a little detail uh, that I that I picked up on that I decided to add. Uh, looks like I've been leaving off semicolons everywhere uh, in the early part of this code. I love the NetBeans IDE that it helps with these things. Um, so there was what? There were five special cases. Um, so one, two, three, four, and then enter made five. If it wasn't one of those five special cases, um, and we know it wasn't clear, then I don't care what state or combination you're in, it was bad. Um, so that was failure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and try this guy, uh, and I'm going to see you know how, how, how this went, right? So I'm going to go ahead and run it. Uh, I'm going to see that I start off at ready. If I press uh, down on the joystick, that takes me into the, the four state. And then if I press three, then I'm on the three. And then if I press zero, I'm now in the zero state. And then if I press down, uh, that is success. So my success path worked out great. If I want to reset, uh, I move the joystick to the left. Uh, so now that kicked me back into the reset state. If I hit the four, uh, but then I hit the number, I don't know, zero next. So if I hit zero, you can see that kicked me into failure. Failure does no lights until you try to press enter. Uh, but if you try to press enter when you're in the failure state, uh, you get all the lights on. So I'm going to clear it back off. So I'm going to just swipe off to the side. You can see that if you tried enter from the get-go, that would be bad too, right? 
Uh, cool. So press down on this is four. Uh, press on the three. Press on the zero. Uh, no lights are on until I try to press enter. Uh, and then once I press enter, it goes into my little LED dance. Woo! Uh, that's it. We just implemented a finite state machine uh, in a pick. Uh, you can see how arrows in here are just kind of like if, if statements implemented on a PLC. There, they're just rungs. The concept of a finite state machine, though, can be used on a lot of different platforms. All right. That's all we got. Hopefully this is a skill that you might find useful in your projects, if you want. <laughs> See you later.